Good. We call them meeting to order. This is the selectmen's, um, a handsome board of selectmen, when, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, December 19th, 2017 meeting. This meeting uh, is being televised live from the, Whitman, uh, from the Hanson Town Hall through the Whitman Hanson Cable Access uh, Network. So I would ask everybody to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Another meeting. This is good, right? Public announcements. Um, bear with me. Volunteers are needed on the following committees: 200th anniversary, agricultural, capital improvement, community preservation commission, disabilities, elder affairs, energy, finance, Memorial Day, Patriot observance, and Nathaniel Thomas Mill committees. Applications for appointment and info on the committee is available on the town website at www.hanson-ma.gov. All town offices will be closed on Monday, December 25th and January 1st for the Christmas and New Year's Day holidays. Um, that's all I have. Pretty small, pretty small announcements, huh, guys? The upcoming meetings, we have the Historical Commission on Wednesday, January 10th at 6 p.m. And we also have the um, Community Preservation at Wednesday, January 10th at 7 p.m. <coughs> also. And that'll do it for announcements and upcoming meetings. Um, I did want to make a quick point. Um, we had our, dis we had our uh, annual holiday last week mm -hmm. up at the Heron Town Hall, and it uh, was well run well organized and it was a lot of fun. Um, it snowed, it rained, and then it snowed again, right? Everybody had a good time. It Everybody snowed, had a very all good the time. kids were playing in the first snow, yeah. it was great. We saw yeah. a lot of snowballs yeah. going around and too, so that was, uh, it was a very good I time. I work, I missed it. Yeah, first I, I, one I in five years. I'm sorry, we missed it, yeah. I don't know if you, Jim, if I missed you, but I missed uh, the morning too, so No, I had other, other plans. That's obligations. Right. Yep, yeah. I understand. But I wanted to say thank you, and I think Laura did too, right? We all want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Miko, and uh, Mr. Hayes, the police department, the highway department, the fire department. Amanda um, Sullivan. Who Amanda Sullivan, yeah. right. Um, the town hall employees, some of them, uh, they, they baked cookies. We had, uh, we had everything here. Mike, it was a, a great time. Oh, so. the restaurant. I mean, it was the whole community. Everybody coming great together. Yep. It was great. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was and it was and good the food, fireworks too. were good, too. Fireworks were excellent. I think yes, they were the best they, ever. I, yeah. I don't I know. I sat right over at Ferry's yeah. parking yeah. lot. In his car. Beautiful. That's the way to be. <laughs> 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 and he was warm and toasty, so that was good. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a very good time, and uh, I think it helps bring the community together. And I want to thank, thank those folks for running it. Um, okay, let's moving on to new business. We have vote the annual license renewals, and we're being asked for, if you'll see the attached list, you'll see um, a listing of uh, various businesses and different license types. I'm just going to group them by license type because there's so many businesses. Well, one is, the, uh, one is uh, for the liquor package store, all alcoholic license type. The other one is the common fit. fit Victiculars, did I pronounce that wrong? No. Victiculars, right? Is Fiddle, fiddlers. Victular. Yeah. Silent wow. C. Silent C. Yep. Better left. Um, automatic amusement, live entertainment, Sunday entertainment, lodging house, and class two um, street license. So I would entertain a motion to accept those license. So moved. Second. For 2018. Motion made a second discussion, Laura. Um, so uh, do we know if everybody's up to date on their um, taxes? And no, do we know if there's been, been any thing. kind of issues with any of these establishments? Nope. They okay. would not have been advanced to this level if we were aware of either of those things. Okay. I thought that was the case, but I have yeah. to oh, ask no. the question. Oh, no, no, no. Yep. Um, okay. Absolutely. Yes, we wouldn't I used to ask that question myself when I was on my board one year. So. Um, okay. Further questions? Anybody? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, Mike, that was to um, license renewals for we're without um, Mary Marini today, who's out on, uh, uh, has some uh, family issues, obligations to take care of, and we miss her greatly, obviously, Mike. 
Yep. Um, Very much so. We have the next item on our agenda is to vote to tax possession auction awards. Um, Michael, did you want to talk I, about I, Yeah, I can address that uh, briefly. It's item the two on your uh, iPads. Agenda iPads, yeah. Um, you attended this, didn't you? Yes, I did on behalf of the town. I represented the town. Um, this was not last Friday, but the previous Friday. Uh, we had uh, the auction of uh, six tax title possessions. Um, it went very, very well. It was very well attended. Um, the final bids that we received, I confirmed the, um, the validity and the value of those with our attorney. Uh, with the auctioneer and with uh, both uh, the treasurer collector and with uh, our assessor. Uh, and we were comfortable, very comfortable with the amounts that uh, we had uh, received or had been pledged to be paid. Uh, and we agreed that night to accept all of those. However, the Board of Selectmen does need to additionally vote <coughs> to accept these amounts uh, and the transfer of this property to the individuals that purchased them or, or bid on them. Uh, I will note that uh, one property in particular we got uh, $117,000 for. Mm. And uh, I think, again, all in all, it was very successful. Very successful. And we look forward to, in the coming months, putting another handful of possessions, of uh, tax title possessions, before the Board of Selectmen. Um, I had already mentioned them at a la at the previous meeting, but we're going to have we go through the process of making sure departments and other committees are okay with it. But uh, once that's done, I'll put it again before the board and um, we'll move through and hopefully we will not only get some short-term uh, revenue from the sales, but we'll put these properties back on the tax rolls. So I, I would ask to, to I'm, oh, oh, go ahead. Good. I was just going to say, Mike, good job, you know, working on this from the start to the end. Yeah. And I want to thank this board, too, for voting to move forward right away and not wait until the spring. Because um, you can see the values that we did, we did pretty good. 170k, roughly around. 100. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know some people that were there that walked away. They said that lot's not worth that, right. <laughs> and they walked away. And I said, yeah, it is, because someone's writing us a check. So uh, good job to everybody. That's just the money's just going into the regular account, Mike. Yeah. Well, what what we had what we had done, uh, I spoke with the town accountant about this because I know the board, the previous board, and perhaps even prior to that has a very strong inclination of uh, committing these funds to the Plymouth uh, County Hospital uh, to uh, try to uh, to try to make up for some of the monies that have been spent up there. And uh, the way that we have it set right now is the town account will put those monies aside or he will earmark those monies. And at the annual town meeting in the spring, we more than likely will go before the town Act meeting and, and, and ask them if they will then commit okay. these particular monies to, uh, to that to that uh, uh, that use so we just can't in and of ourselves the board myself we just can't do that it doesn't work that way but we have put in place a procedure hopefully that by the spring we'll be able to take this amount of money and apply it towards you know our right. expenses so did there. we roughly make about ninety thousand more than what we were owed in this deal roughly uh, yeah yeah roughly okay yeah, it was a total of 171,000 auction price yeah. in total. That's yeah. pretty good. So I think it's very important. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, you go. I, I just wanted to say it's very important, I, and I, I really appreciate Kenny's praise, but I think it's very important for me to point out that the real work had been done by uh, the treasure collector, uh, Jeannie Sullivan, and uh, Lee Gamash, our uh, assessor, as well as Mary Marini had an awful lot to do with it. and. Uh, Sometimes, you know, I, I'm the face of, of all those people, and I, I get the praise. I want to make sure that it's recognized by the public. And, again, I do appreciate it, Kenny, but yeah. um, well, they did the bulk of the work. I just sometimes just shove them in certain directions. You just so. take all the credit. I just take all the, all the credit, yeah. Um, That's pretty cool. So, so I get, well, the, sure. only, yeah, the only question I have, Mike, is um, the 171 that um, the chairman had just mentioned. Mm. How much of that do we actually get? Do we, are there other people that have to be paid, whether the auctioneer no. or? Nope. No, that's all been taken care of. I paid for uh, all the legal fees through our uh, legal line, and the auctioneer actually, there was an 8% markup on the numbers you're seeing right here. Uh, that went directly to the auctioneer. So this is the money that we have realized. Now the person that paid um, 
you know, the uh, let's say if, uh, the person who paid a hundred uh, ten thousand dollars for one of the piece of properties, yeah, yeah. that actually ended up being, um, you know, uh, ten thousand eight hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and um, so you're giving you know, that person the, got the eight hundred. Yes. This is the net yes. amount. Okay. Okay. So oh, we. Yeah, this, I have no clue how it would yeah, work. That's our money. Yeah. Okay. Can so you do free and clear. Uh, no. No. Donnie, did you have another question? No. no. So I'm, I would it be appropriate just for me to quickly read the street address and the uh, auction price and the buyer? I think for transparency. It's it's all public information. It is all public. Okay. Is that required for the motion? No, it's not, oh, but uh, okay. it's, it's certainly public information if the board wishes to put it out there. We did, and I'm not sure if we ended up showing it on uh, on cable yet, but uh, we did record uh, the entire uh, auction. Oh, cool. uh, so, um, again, it's technically, it was a public meeting. How and, long did it take, roughly, Mike? Cool. Is it 40 minutes? 40 yeah. Minutes? yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah. Really? Okay. That's quick. It was very interesting. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, I'm just going to read it because I do believe in, in, uh, in transparency. Oak Street. Property, well, the auction price was for, um, what it sold for was $30,000 to Henry L. Holmes. Uh, Lakeside Road, parcel 0002B, um, that is the one that went for 117000 also to Mr. Uh, Henry L. Holmes. We had another Lakeside Road piece of parcel that went for 7000 That went to William and Joanne Bailey uh, Kelbeck. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yep, and then, of course, we had um, another... Uh, Lakeside Road went to Henry L. Holmes um, at $3,000. Whitman Street, $10,000 went to Jeffrey Landerville. And Adams Circle, for the amount of $4,000, went to Mr. Kevin Cohen. So I would entertain a motion to accept these amounts so move. and the Second. transfer of property. The motion has been made and seconded. <clears throat> Further discussion or questions? Um, just one question. Is somebody writing this stuff down for Mary? Um, I'm taking care of it. Thanks. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. And did we get a check in from, from <laughs> Mike wasn't, if Mike wasn't doing homes. it, I promise you I was. <laughs> <laughs> three properties? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. uh, he owes us a ton of dough. Okay. Um, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero on that, Mike. Yeah. In favor. <laughs> Okay, the next item we have is the vote uh, and accept the donations for the Nathaniel Thomas Mill. That's under item three on your iPads. We have um, uh, various donors. I guess I should be reading them out loud or no? I guess I will. Um, Mr. Robert Sears for $20. Virginia Sears for $50. James Hickey, $60. Christine Leonard at $10. James Flanagan at $40. Pamela Cohen at $110. Amy Prostran, Prostran, is that how I pronounce it? I hope so, $120. James Flanagan again at $30. Uh, Heather Witt at $20. Kathleen Fuller at $30. Amy Prostran again at $10. Clyde Robinson at $40. Catherine Fortran at $40. And Hanson Community Drummer at $1,010. And giving us a grand total of $1,590. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I can quickly explain, I, I'm going to ask for the, uh, the board to bifurcate this vote. Um, the, um, in order for the uh, Thomas Mill to take in money in its revolving fund, uh, monies have to be recognized as rentals. So uh, this was from a play that was put on uh, a few, um, a month or so ago. And what we did is we went back out and we, we calculated the amount of days that would be, uh, the amount of rental days and how that should be applied to the amount before you right now. Okay. And then um, unfortunately the excess will have to go to the general fund because we don't have a, 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 a avenue in which to take anything other than uh, rental fees into their revolving fund. So I would ask the board, uh, as it considers accepting this donation, to make a motion to accept uh, $1,300 as rent to be committed to the, uh, the Thomas Mill Revolving Fund, and $290 to be accepted to be accepted in, uh, to be put into the general fund. I would entertain a motion to um, to include what Mike just what Mike just stated at $1,300 $1, in rent. $1,300 for rent. 
to still the holds. Thomas Mill. Two, yep, 290 in general fund. To the general fund. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Questions? Uh, I'm just trying to, uh, can you explain this a little bit more? I, I'm trying. I guess, Mike, you want um, I was part of the play. My name is on the donation. I have no vested interest uh, money-wise. I don't hold any kind of office in Hanson Drama. We put the play on at the mill, but any play that was done at the camp, um, we had friends at Camp Kiwani. Anything that's done at the library has the friends of the library committee. The mill itself does not. So what we had to do was every time we used the mill for rehearsals, um, you know, uh, getting set design ready, it had to go in as a rental. So the best way to do it was, as Mike said, the 1300 was every time we were in there. Um, obviously, we don't want to give any kind of refund or anything like that. So the excess money would actually go into the general fund. Um, so the 1300 was the total for every day you guys were in there for the yep. play, and then the excess is the 290 that goes in the general fund. Yeah, and then that way um, the mill has it in its revolving account. Okay. I, I think, okay, but I thought there was a Friends of Thomas Mill. Not that I'm aware of. There used to be, unless yeah. they've disbanded. I don't know. According to the accountant, again, I've, I've had several conversations <coughs> with the accountant as to how to bring this in, and this is the only way that his, is, he's aware of that we could okay, bring it in. But shouldn't there have been a rental agreement and rental fees being paid? I don't I, understand. I'm I think there was... Uh, I think there was uh, some confusion in terms of, as uh, Selectman Hickey mentioned, mm -hmm. in terms of the way that things had been done in terms of drama and plays at the camp with the assumption that this, a similar sort of setup could be done at the Thomas Mill. When we became aware after the fact that that, that, sort, of, um, that sort of procedure, that sort of setup was not the same as the camp, you know what had happened in terms of the play and the rentals that had all you know come to pass so we are now working to make sure that there is an understanding going forward at that particular property that you know certain things need to be done uh, to be in compliance going forward with rental agreements and things of that nature well, i would hope we would just handle it the same way we do at camp quantity if people want a waiver they just come before uh, the board yes often, right? exactly and, yeah. and and to put it in a nutshell basically uh what i have done is i've taken the policy procedures that i wrote for the camp um i've edited them down because there's an awful lot that obviously wouldn't pertain to that sort of an operation and <clears throat> at a future selectmen's meeting i will be presenting those policies and procedures for uh adoption by the board and it so will just be watered down. The around this is these guys really want it to go to Thomas Mill. So if we waive the rental fee, then it kind of doesn't achieve what they ultimately wanted to do. So mm. I, we'll have to think about the best way to achieve that. Yeah. Like, you know, to sort of say they don't need to pay it, but then to find a way. And, I, you know, there may not be. Maybe maybe we reconstruct and we, we back in what the rental fee is based on what they bring in. I don't know. but Or you know. we reconstitute, mm -hmm. and again, to the best of my knowledge, it doesn't exist right now, but we reconstitute a, a Friends of the Thomas Mill. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of thought going into this going forward okay. uh, in terms of the right way to gotcha. avoid the confusion in the future. Um, and it will be something, again, that will be brought before the board. I am uh, in contact and have been in contact with the chairman of that particular committee. Uh, want to make sure that obviously it's an inclusive process as opposed to guess what you're doing now sort of a process. That's never really goes over very well. So um, I want to make sure everyone has a, a say in how we craft this going forward. And uh, again, ultimately the Board of Selectmen will make the decision on voting on, on it going forward. And we'll, we are addressing it so that we don't okay, have the same Okay, but so we'll be good disconnects. going forward. And for this, it ultimately the way you've come up with this plan it's going to mostly achieve what they were hoping to yes. do which is okay. yes yeah okay the other thing i want to make sure so to make to, so to summarize thirteen hundred dollars was in total fees rental for the use of the of, of the thomas mill yes and then the additional 290 dollars was extra farming right yes of the donation i just want to make clear my two on policies and procedures that we do not accept cash yes right? it has and to be that way because when you're starting to hand large amounts of cash to people it can be very dangerous right yep. and was this in cash uh not all of it oh, the oh, the, okay. the names that the chairman read off were actually checks okay uh and then the number at the bottom the thousand uh ten dollars was cash okay right all right so we've got some lessons learned yep. so right yep. okay 
We've always accepted it this way, Lar, with the mill, as a donation. Yep. No, nope, you know, I understand. I, and, we're, and we're not debating that. We just want to make sure, because obviously, you know, it, 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 we just need to be careful to follow the right rules and regs on this, or else, you know, we could it, it, sure we're it could it go the down right the wrong way. path too, right? Yep. You know? And but like no I harm. said, they will be written and put before the board. And yeah. Okay, so I did, was that moved in? Second? Motion was made and seconded. Okay. I believe is that correct? Yes, yeah, right? it's correct. Right. Yep. All right. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Five zero on that, Mike. In favor of acceptance. Okay. Next item is the. Set the meeting schedule. You should see on item, um, I, th I think we also have the attachment, but it's also yeah, on item did. four. Yeah. Um, I, I always agree with what Mary does. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll motion it. <laughs> you know? So she's got, I think, the ones in yellow highlight of dates yes. that I think she's selected, and she does it up until June 2018. Right. Right. And it looks like she stayed away from, like, February vacation, Martin right. Luther King, yeah. you know, like all that stuff. So. And, and, and we can always add and change as we go. Yep. And yeah. she's got the first Monday and Tuesday in May blocked off for town meeting. Yeah. Right. Right? Which is May 7th and 8th. Yeah. And she's updated us up until June of 2018. And it looks like we're setting a bi weekly schedule, except for in April, right? We have two. April, we've got because of Monday, budget six, review. three successive right. Mondays yeah. in a row. Because I think of review, budget review, and yeah. probably town yes, meeting. Yes, I believe so. it's, yeah, budget review. And I think those are supposed warrants. to be Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, in April, yeah, I would say sure. that's those, those are I think you, I think you're right. So, so, <clears throat> so we should the amend third, it. Tenth and seventeenth. Yeah. yeah, Mike, you see that? Yes, I most certainly do. That happens. Three. What was that? Three ten and seventeen. Three, three ten, yeah. seventeen. So April, take the 10, month of April and shift it over year. one day. I can safely say that's what she was thinking. Yep. yep. Okay, I make a motion to accept the dates as proposed in the 2018 calendar with the modification of moving the April, April dates to the 3rd, 10th, and 17th. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero on the dates, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Change on the April. Oops, let me skip this one. Okay, next we have the vote to approve the amendment one to the agreement for engineering and supplemental services in connection with the rehabilitation of McQuan Street. Is that item number five on our uh, on your iPads? So the planning department town of Hanson Mass amendment one to agreement for the engineering <coughs> and supplemental services in connection with the rehabilitation of McQuan Street. This is a December 5th, 2017. Um, it looks like it's a contract prepared by the engineers joint contract um, uh, documents committee and they've got various um, sponsors as well right ASE ASCE ACEC um, so it looks like I think Jim we signed this back in last year yeah August 2016 2016 so this is just an amendment what are they amending Do to we that well this is based, agreement this I is believe. based on the town meeting vote uh, where the town appropriated the the percentage that uh, the ten percent that we needed to uh, to match uh, with the state in terms of uh, the tip program and, and uh, for the uh, the refurbishment of uh, McQuan Route 14 again um, we're putting up uh, over seven hundred thousand dollars to basically get seven million dollars right was it 750 Mike or was it 700 plus it's 750, 700 plus 750 thousand yeah right? So um, it, it, it really is. Yeah. It's section three there. Is that what's being amended? I'm on number one, I don't know. Do you have this in front of you? I, I don't have it in front of me. Unfortunately, I don't have I think a hard it's section copy. Three, character but it's, it's basically. Supplemental services. It's, yeah, it's to right. supplemental. The supplemental right. services one, is so for the actual. Item two. Okay, gotcha. The actual Only overall original. engineering yeah. work, which again what is our. The cost that we need to carry. Yep. It's just to get it on the tip program. I understand. Yeah. Yep. So it says here, so it's under section three. It's on page two, guys. Right? I'm sorry, page three. Under section three, character and extent of engineering and supplemental services, the entire section B. Phase two, engineering design services, mass DOT is 25%, 75%, 100%, and final PS&E in section C. 
phase three, construction phase services will be deleted and replaced with the following sections to be performed in May part of the original agreement dated oh. June 2016. It's right underneath the oh, description there. of modifications. Yeah. So I just read to you the, the, the description of the modifications to the, to the original um, contract. So I would entertain a motion to accept the contract um, and amendment as, uh, as read. Second. Any questions? The only reason why I know is because I actually read it Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any questions on it, Kenny? No, no, not at all. Well, see, what it's this will allow us to do, and, and it's timely, um, the engineer has uh, arranged for uh, a certain amount of the work to be done before the end of the calendar year, uh, which will allow us, uh, before the end of the calendar year, to for the engineer to submit to make sure that we're on the TIP program yeah. and we don't miss a year. Um, the TIP program, I've been involved with it in the past uh, in a uh, different capacity, is a very convoluted, a very competitive uh, program and process, and we certainly don't want to miss any time. Uh, in, in again a year perhaps two years by not moving as quickly as possible as we can on this and again this is this is as a result of the town meeting vote and the funds being allocated mm -hmm. back then okay okay 26 23 and it's been vetted. yeah it's the same amount 45 of money, so yeah. Nice. yeah okay and it's been vetted by town council and so i'm just going to read quickly the com compensation services identified in phase two this is the preliminary design, 25%. This guy's is on page um, 14, okay? This is the $750,000 that we're talking about. So it shall be made up on a lump sum basis for the fee of $379,000. That's the preliminary design, 25%. Compensation for services identified in phase three. The final design is 75% and 100% and final PS&E design submission. And that amount is for $326,000. The fee for the work as described in Section 3, Phase 3, Engineering Services During Construction, shall be billed to the town on a time and expense basis at the Environmental Partners Standard Billing Rate, in effect at the time the services are performed with a not to exceed price of $45,000. And, uh, and that's where we get. Uh, that's where we come up with our numbers, right? They, and the actual agreement amount, is it 795? I thought if I added the 379, 326, and the 45. No, if you add the 45 to the 750, then you get the 795. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plus right. the, okay. the, the, the monies that were so that in the first contract. Which original, is part of the original agreement. The original agreement okay. amount, that's correct. Okay. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Um, any further discussion or questions? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Five zero to accept, Mike. Thank you. That's a fairly significant step. Okay. Next on our agenda, we have item six under um, requests, right? We have Whitman Hanson Cable Access. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Green Hanson. Waiver of fees for Camp Kewanee rental for January 19th, 2018. This is from, uh, this, I guess, the description of the event is the Hanson Green Movie Night. It'll be request facility at the lodge. Requesting lodge be donated by the town of Hanson for Hanson Green movie night. Lodge to be at zero fee and zero security deposit. I think they're here. Tonight. They're here tonight? Yep. Right? Thank you, guys. Yeah, and Matt. Um, movie is in an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power. 2000. Is that the name of the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Right? There will be popcorn and beverages served. Um, <coughs> under 75 count attending. So seats are limited, right? All right, Hanson Recreation. I'm trying to get more people to hurry up. <laughs> okay. Tickets are almost yep. sold out, folks. Yep. Okay. So the and it's important to note that the Hanson Recreation Commission has approved this on December 4th, 2017 meeting, and they are actually pending the board of selectmen approval. The date and hours of the event are January 19th, as I stated, 2018, from 6 to 9 p.m., with a 5 p.m. setup time, and they're asking for a waiver of the rental and the security deposit. Are there any questions from anyone? No, it's, I, I think they do great work and I applaud them for continuing to do their work. That's terrific, thank you guys very much. All right, um, I would uh, entertain a motion to accept this waiver as, uh, as I've read. I'll move. Second. 
Nietzsche. I'll let Mike figure out who oh. comes out in the second. Oh, I'm going to watch the video. Toss it <laughs> I'll just, I'll, all right. I'll buy my tickets for you. They'll be, they'll be happy about that. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Do you have zero. any tickets on you? Um, <laughs> All right. Stop by my house, man. <laughs> very good. Very good. So you're all set. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Um, old business. This is the Whitman Hanson Cable Access contract for board's review and vote at this meeting. It says next meeting, but they mean this meeting because last yeah. time we yeah. got this last meeting. Okay. So you should have a um, the contract. Um, it's also item on the item seven. I think we've also got a handout too. And if I'm not mistaken, Mike, I know that um, um, I did not get the chance to meet with you, but you did get to meet with Arlene and Eric. Is that yes, correct? Yes, that's correct. And I had a follow-on conversation with Frank Lyman. I know the board had expressed at the last meeting to, uh, to make sure that um, Whitman was in concert with this because um, by and large they will adopt the, the same um, agreement and uh, Frank Lyman and, and the town of Whitman are fine with what you have in front of you right now. Okay. And am I to understand that the items that are either crossed out or added in the on the lines under comment, these were the changes that were agreed to? Is that correct? That's correct. So if you'll notice, guys, on page uh, three, that's the first one, I believe. Okay. You'll see in the about the middle in, the, in section A. If the educational access channel is operated by the Women Hanson Region School District, Women Hanson shall coordinate with the school district with respect to operation of the education channel. And if so, they just remove that section. Okay. Is that the only change? That's the only change on that page, page three. Yes. But there's other parts of it that have changed. Yeah, yeah. Yes. There are a few other changes. And then, of course, is page four. If you look at page four, there was a comment. Uh, the obligation to cable cast these meetings shall remain. Regardless of funding available to Whitman Hands as an access, basically to make sure that we perpetuate. Well, so we the same, <coughs> right. Because if we didn't have any money, we would dissolve anyway. Right. So. And if you dissolve, <laughs> you, you can't. can't you can't. You can't. can't, can't anything. <laughs> and you guys are good with this, the way it appears here. We will. Yeah. Okay. We, those, really, those, really good meetings. The notes that you're right. seeing on the side are notes that Eric has written. Yep. Those are so good. We just went through all of those. Yep. And it does say that the consensus is that. Non sequitur. If there right. is no funding, we could. Yep, exactly what you said. Non sequitur. I remember that one. <laughs> I remember that from Star Trek, Mike. I don't, know if I get that from the don't say that word. Oh, I love that. I, I use non sequitur all the time. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay, so. Moving on. Current inventory of the equipment possession or control which was purchased with funds provided by through the town of MXP. Yeah, you've already given us the uh, the. We the, did, but there's some that we don't have serial numbers on, and we won't be able to get them. All the equipment that's in the truck, yep. we don't have serial numbers for. It's delicate equipment. You don't want to take it out to take the serial numbers. Yeah, but you at least put it on the list. If if but, we had to replace it, it's on the list. Yeah. It just doesn't have a serial. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's on the list. Yeah, that's fine. As long as it's on the list of inventory, it doesn't say how it needs to be. If you take it out, you might be replacing it. It's on the list, and there's a description of it, right? Yes. So if yes. it went missing, we. But, the, but yes. that said that we did both. That we okay. Both. Yeah. That's what you're saying. I'm trying to change this. As long so as everybody agrees, you know. Yes. Yeah. Now you removed entire the section D on the dis the dissolution of the Whitman Hanson access. Just because it was redundant. To, to what you, to what the previous yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So you'll see that whole paragraph in section 21. Yeah, it's stated further on. Okay. Yeah, there were some redundancies on here. That's right, wasn't there? Access duty shall be distribution of use for the purpose of benefit. Was it specific to this duty does not benefit any access? All right. Yeah. Board of Selectmen or it says you may virtue. I thought. Do do we still need to do? Um, is it five days in advance notice? I don't recall. Board. I thought that was part I of it. No. In terms of the presentation to the board of selectmen, Mike might have said. Two, uh, two weeks or 10 days or something right. like that. Okay. It's written in there, I can't recall. Yeah, it's written yep. somewhat further in the... Now, I'm curious, on page 8, section D, 
Uh, eight, uh, <coughs> subsection D, the access studio shall be the, for the exclusive use of access users. I can see, um, you know, where you've kind of said that it, you'll t tell hours, et cetera, et cetera, but um, shouldn't it be for the exclusive use of access users? Do you have that somewhere else where it says exclusive use of access no, users? No, no, no. The reason that that was removed is we don't know what's five, ten years in the future. We don't know what we're going to have to do to remain in good financial standing. And if we need to do something to make alternative revenues, we don't want to be prohibited by that agreement. But to do wouldn't, so. you, wouldn't we want you to come to us and tell us that now it's not for the exclusive use of access? You already know this Comcast would have already told you they're not giving us any more money. And that's not, you know, this is one of those things where you want to start to turn the ship before it hits the beach. You no, know, I, no I hear what you're saying, but this gives you the ability now to use the studio for something other than access users. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it would so not be. It would not be the conversations that I had with Eric and Arlene is any decisions, um, and they, it would be a rather dramatic move, but they would be done in concert and in consultation with not only the town of Hanson but the town of Whitman. Um, this would not be something they would do arbitrarily. Uh, they would not do it without coming. And, and as I think Arlene might have mentioned, we'd know that far ahead of time because we'd get we get notification from Comcast because we are the ones that actually receive the funding and then give to the cable uh, access scenario, studio. In that scenario, if that were the reason, but the way the contract's written right now, there's nothing to stop them from going out tomorrow and using it for some other, for uh, people other than just the access users. Like, I, I understand that you're, this is a gentleman's agreement and that this is what you, that, you know, that you're telling, and I'm certainly not saying you've got ill intent. I'm, I'm right, absolutely right. not saying that. Right. But I go by the document because honestly when all else fails the document prevails and when I'm looking at this contract it doesn't prevent you from allowing other people to use that studio and that's the way this contract reads right now and I know that's not your intention but that's the way the contract reads and I hear what you're saying then what I would suggest just to to, to um, I guess try to find a middle well, I think, I think uh, to, to Selectman uh, Kemet's concerns, I think what we can do if the board is in agreement and, uh, and Arlene as a representative of, of the cable board is in agreement, we can leave that in there and say that any um, uh, anything, any use other than that will be brought before uh, would have to be brought before not only this board but also before the the, the board in Whitman um, for um, permission or and mutually for, agreed upon in advance or something, yeah, something like, that. like that so that it would be some it would be a 50 cent, so your hands aren't tied sort of you could still come to us and ask yeah. us well, it's two, a, two points first of all I know that one of Whitman's concerns is to put the towns at an arm's length in terms of liability yes and so direct insight as to what sorts of activities we could or could not mm, per, pursue or, or be involved with might cross if that we line. have to come to you does that then make you make liable, liable for, for the activities for the that content happen all of, over. of the broadcast yeah mm -hmm. So that's point one and point I two. don't see how we would be. No, you, you're asking for the access. I don't think that that makes us own what you're doing with the access. You're saying you're going be, that it's not just our, our constituents that are going to be able to use it. That you're going to have a third party. I would assume we've got some kind of indemnification with them for what they do with the studio and okay. and, and who they allow to use well, it. Well, it certainly is that level of indemnification. But I think the concern is, and I think you know, to Eric's point. The concern is uh, there, there's always loopholes. There's always the, the possibility that that indemnification uh, could the a judgment against uh, I hate to say it this way, but a judgment against the cable access company could exceed what their coverage is, and then fall back onto either the town of Hanson or the town of Whitman. So I see. I do see that as as an issue as well. But why would that? Why would the attorney, our attorney, uh, allow this to be in there in the first place? If we were be, to be held liable to what Eric is saying, because I understand what you're saying, Eric. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you're asking us to come to you for yeah. permission. Yeah, and, and that goes against the reason why the corporation was set up to protect the towns. I get it. Right. But, right. but 
well, why would our attorney allow us to have this in there if that weren't the case? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a conflict. Oh, I, he, Eric, I will say yes, that I also point. think that that was added in at some point. It was not in it wasn't in the, the prior contract, payment. so that is new language. It wasn't in the original. I don't yeah. to how well that new language was vetted by the attorney. Uh, we were, I, I'm just concerned sorry, because yeah. our responsibility is to the citizens of Hanson, as Whitman Selectman is to the citizens of, Han of Whitman, and the agreement is that it's for citizens to use the studio and and you're asking to take out language that says that it's exclusively to be used for that and I well it's not a preclusion at all for well, the access yeah, the you know members of the access corporation who are basically you know the subscribers uh, to uh, to cable to Comcast it certainly doesn't preclude them uh, in any sense or the way I read the omission uh, in any sense what this allows is as Eric mentioned should the uh, uh, the landscape change in the next several years where Comcast is not I, I don't think Comcast is ever going to pull up and not fund to some level the operation but if the expenses of the operation exceed the funding of, from Comcast it allows um, the cable operation to go out and perhaps allow private entities to do some that's, production that's, that's exactly and things of that point. things of that um, nature. I think I've told you so all before, and if not you, the, a prior version of this board. I serve on the board of directors for the trade organization here in Massachusetts, and this is a pretty um, typical, a very a buzzword among us is alternative revenues. I can't go to a conference without having a session or several on alternative revenues because, frankly, the other word we hear a lot is cord cutters. So it's not that Comcast funding is going to dry up tomorrow, next week, next year. It's that we may see some attrition over time. And so we want to start to be thinking about what sort of alternative revenues we may be able to generate to infill any, we want to stay at least level funded. So this isn't an agreement that will allow us to you know, sublet our property or this or that. This is just to, to make sure that we can maintain level funding. Um, and to make sure that we've got all the allowances we need to do so. Well, I can appreciate that, but um we're, we're Hanson Selectmen, and we represent Hanson citizens, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that they're being given priority. And when I read that, that I, it's, I can appreciate that you're going to need additional revenue. I get that. But um, if you get additional revenue, how do I know you're not going to give Hanson citizens and Whitman citizens short shrift? You're saying 40 hours and some evening and weekend hours, but how do I know the prime hours aren't going to go to whomever it is that's going to be paying you this extra revenue? We could certainly do something in terms of priority, the word priority well, instead of exclusive. My question is, can we change exclusive to primary? I have to look at the web page. Well, I mean, eight. it's not oh, defined, no, it's so I, yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? So that it's not exclusive. We just don't want to be, yeah, excluding, you know, the opportunity to do other things. But I, I'm with you about priority. Our, our mission statement remains, you know, what it is, and it's to fulfill these duties first and foremost. Anything else would be supporting actions. Well, the, the, Eric, I'm looking at the previous contract and they did have the verbiage there. It said under section eight, Access Studio, this is the March 2005 okay. agreement. So it's um, it's verbatim okay. to, what, to what's there. Well, and again, this is, um, this is a relatively recent turn of events. I, I can say that uh, I've been in this industry for you now close to 10 years and it's been about the last five that alternative revenues has been a real buzz. Um, what I disadvantages of, of it is it to the corporation, is it? Well, it's lack of agility. They won't have agility to respond as they need if, if the market changes and they need to bring in revenue and they're afraid that if, if you know, maybe the board changes or the relationship changes, you know, people could hamstring them and have their ability to be able to bring in that outside revenue and completely not agree to it. I understand where you guys are coming from, 100%. If that's, if that's their point, though, I don't see it. I just don't get that point. You know what I'm saying? I don't see that point that what Laura just said as being an issue. I mean, if I, if, I read, if, I read this, if I read this out loud so people know what we're talking about, it says, the Access Studio shall be for the exclusive use of Access users, right? Then the second sentence, and this is the only one after it, the studio shall not be used for any other purpose or for the benefit of any persons other than access users or persons whose specific use of the studio does not benefit PEG access in Hanson or Whitman unless otherwise authorized by the issuing authorities of both towns. So, I mean, I don't see, it doesn't limit your access to it. And I'm, I'm guessing that from a legal perspective that our attorney wouldn't have allowed us to keep it there 
if it was a conflict to that, to the nature of why the corporation was yeah. set up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just I think exclusive it could be too preventative. You know, for what we need to do. Well, I mean, who's who's give me access users? Define access users. It would be anybody from the town of Whitman and the town. Well, of Hanson, Hanson, right? Yeah. That yeah. was that was you getting using our services to gain access to either the equipment and or channels. So, but what about the scenario where perhaps a local nonprofit wanted to come in and use our services to make a promotional video that wouldn't go on our channel but might go on their Facebook page? And we could charge a market rate for that. And, uh, yeah, and, and I supplement don't think our, our discussions, I don't think we were talking about broadcast. We were, no. we were talking so about that. So that'd be a perfect case in point right there. That's, so that it, would, it, it would not prohibit. Uh, it would not bump any of the current uh, uh, programming, the, 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 the public programming that the the uh, cable access committee does. It would just be, um, you know, the use of the studio, the use of the equipment. Right, but so, but so it's, and again, I, I completely understand, and I understand you guys, that's your mission is to make sure you've got a viable organization. Similarly, our mission is to advocate for <coughs> the citizens of Hanson. Um, so I, I, in Eric's example, you know, how do we know that this doesn't suddenly take off and he's videoing the stuff all the time and then we're getting the short end of the straw and when we've got citizens going in to do things, they're being told, well, sorry, you know, we, you, we can't give you studio time, you know, in the middle of the day or a time that might be convenient for you. We've got uh, Sunday at 8 a.m. available. I'm, I'm exaggerating for, to make a point here, but, you know, um, and that's my concern. Sure. Is and, I don't want to be second banana here. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, you know, it, it certainly is a, a viable concern. It's, it's an appropriate concern. But um, I think, again, uh, to give the flexibility, and I think to a certain degree, uh, to be the devil's advocate, to a certain degree, we need to place a degree of trust in, in this particular commission and its, and its uh, management that they will adhere to their primary uh, mission, which is to provide those sorts of services. So uh, if, if the preclusion of this language is of such a concern of the Board of Selectmen, I certainly don't want to see um, a decision to go forward on this contract to be further delayed by, you know, this particular language. So I, I would defer back to the, the chairman of that board and, and the director as to whether or not you know, this is something they're willing to acquiesce on it in leaving well, it in there. Mike, I, to, to your point, okay, I look, I think these are lovely people. I love working with them. Um, I think this is a good group of people, too, and I, I think I kind of know where everybody is here. But we are not going to be here forever, and we've got we're we're we are looking at a document that's going to stand the test of time. <coughs> the document prevails. So five years from now, when these guys maybe aren't at the Whitman Hanson Cable, and none of us here are this are on the board of selectmen, I want to make sure that we've got an agreement that's going to be in the best interest of the citizens of Hanson. Well, I believe in that instance, the, their primary mission, which I believe is stated. Uh, in a couple of places would take precedent prevail as well and again if i'm not mistaken i don't want to misstate something but your primary mission is to provide those services to the uh, to the members of uh, the communities well I remember too that we're going to make quarterly updates and that's an opportunity for close contact. well yes because in the contract it does state that the board of selectmen each year can review will review with you this contract in the terms of, of its fulfillment within it right mm -hmm. but i understand laura's point because uh i feel like if we take this section out guys that we're taking away the ability for a person in hansen or whitman to to have the access that they want if they so choose to use yeah i, I don't think that's the intention so i think that the language that's removed is not the correct language for either of our out desired outcomes. Okay. So what do we do here? So you guys, you, you don't want to, you don't want to give to this. I think point. it also exceeds us. I, I, I think that based off of my informal conversations with Whitman, that this is, they don't want that proximity to to the liabilities and things like that as well. So I know that this is something that we're going to have to circle the wagon. So yeah, unfortunately, it just doesn't make sense to me, Eric, as to why my our attorney, our attorney, would allow this to be there if that were an impact. And isn't our attorney their attorney? Isn't don't no, know. Our attorney. Well, okay. Our attorney is not there. Well, I thought Bill Solomon was, yeah. was the one that made this original agreement. I don't know that he's 
been involved uh, in the has. past six or eight months with oh, this. Yes, yeah, he most certainly has. Yeah. 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 Solomon is our attorney. He's, he uh, and represents they just, they just, you, they just but pay. we pay him. They pay him. Yes. Oh, I know. He represents the town's I get it. Yes. So we reviewed this. And allowed yeah. this to be there, but they decided to take it out because of the issues. No, but the new one, this one here, did Solomon review that with the verbiage being taken out? Did he re review with the verbiage? I've spoken to him about it. Okay. And he's okay with it? He was okay with it. Well, just because it's he's okay with it being taken out. Doesn't mean that it's okay to take it right. out. Right. Well, at the end of the day, and, and I'm not going to belabor the point, at the end of the day, it really is what the Board of Selectmen is comfortable with. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly not here to, to say that you're wrong, just to try to explain When I read the paragraph, I don't see it the way that you guys do, but that's just my opinion. I just, but again, and I, 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 and I, I am concerned about what he said about the liability factor where they come to us and they're going to have a pony show in there and we say, yeah, and somebody gets hurt. Well, we approved that pony show, so then the liability shifts back. I think that's yeah, more important. Yeah, but to Jim's point, then why was that language sufficient in, as reviewed by our attorney when it was included in prior versions? Right. Well, the same attorney reviewed again on this contract 10 years later. But he's not suggesting it be removed. He's saying it's okay to remove it. Right. It, yeah. It's and again, dead. again. Uh, Move to the vote. That's all I can say. Again, I, I don't, I don't want to push anything that the board of selectmen is not comfortable with. I just yeah. honestly, I feel. I would have. I mean, I, you, yeah. you obviously want they, you guys want to move to the vote. I wish that there was some alternative language that could try to meet both of our needs being offered up, but it doesn't seem that time, time permits that. So I. Uh, the thing that bothers me is anytime you remove user access. It, it's a uh, suspicious we event. Come up with language together that would talk about priority usage. Yeah. Um, that wouldn't be so um, exclusionary of other things. To this point. Um, that would be my recommendation. And because I, 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 yeah, I, I don't think yeah. That, to your point from earlier, um, it's better that we have the uh, right fit than the quick fit. Mm. As my colleague would say, um, no, I'm going to misphrase him. So. I think it's better to have the right fit than the question. I don't have a problem with the, with it if you if you're able to say that our guys get priority, you know, uh, with, that the the access users get priority. I don't have a problem with that, and then I think that that gets you kind of where you want to go, and then and that's what the intentions are, anyways. But it, but but to Laura's point, it needs to be stated in the contract. She feels, and I agree. I think it. Uh, I think we need to come to some sort of agreement on that on that language. Are you guys willing to wait until January or no? We, we can. Yeah, it Do you want to look at the other changes as well? So I don't yep. have any other problems. <clears throat> you don't have any other problems with any other Do changes? Do you have no other questions with some of the other changes? I mean, the fact that, like you says, the Board of Selectmen is made by, on page 9, by virtue of this Section 9, required by a reasonably timely notice, the non comp uh, confidential portion of any meeting be cable cast by Whitman on the public access channel. Whitman Hansen is not a public body and is not subject to the open meeting law. However, the substantial provisions of the open meeting law, including the executive session exceptions set out therein, it is suggested it serve as a guide with respect to the. You know, it might be best too to have Mr. Solomon here at this meet at this meeting, Mike. I'd like to question why some of these things. You know what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. All right. So, what do we want to do? Uh, let's look at the let's look at the other changes, like Arlene stated. So, again, under Section 11, this allows us, unless waived by the Board of Selectmen, each year, we shall meet with uh, Women Hanson Access in the Board of, at the Board of Selectmen or its designee. The purpose of said meeting shall include reviewing Women Hanson Access, page nine, under the update meeting. Now, if we could back up, Mr. Chairman, to the section that you just quoted that had been struck. Yes. I actually wrote that verbiage. That, um, yeah, that wasn't part of the original. Yeah, plan. that was oh. out of, you know, some of the feedback the that intent, I was getting Mike? from the previous Board of Selectmen. Well, the intent was the Board of Selectmen was interested in having uh, this particular uh, organization conduct itself under the public meeting rules and regulations, and they're not subject to such. Right. So, uh, again, in concert with the town of Whitman, it was something Whitman was not comfortable with the inclusion of this language. So it was struck. Again, it was something that I had put together sort of as a bridge to try to, uh, to, try to get to, uh, 
I guess some semblance of what this board, this previous board, was looking to do. However, uh, this this entity is really not subject to those requirements. No, so at the end of the day, um, you know, I agreed to strike it. Okay. So that was that was my call. Okay. It was my verbiage, and it was my call to remove it. So right. was this in the prior version? No, it was not. Oh, so this was just suggested changes that you then edited out. Yeah, exactly. Okay. This, right. These were changes that the previous board had some concern, or this was an issue on which the previous board expressed some concerns. Um, this was my verbiage to try to bridge those concerns. But at the end of the day, technically, again, they're not a public entity. Uh, they, they are not required to, uh, to comply with the public hearing, the public meeting laws. And it really was superfluous language because even though it was a suggestion, they don't need to adhere to it. Sure. So it was, it was almost clogging. Uh, the verbiage was clogging up the, uh, the agreement. So okay. I struck it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I have one question to, sure. to Laura's sure. concerns. Um, and this, uh, this contract right here is for 10 years, November 29, 2024. Okay, so it's not going to go on forever but uh, to Laura's concerns about Hanson and Whitman residents isn't that um, kind of taken care of in sexual uh, uh, section 11 B where if a Hanson resident had a problem with you guys they could contact us mm -hmm. and we go right to section 11 B get you two back in here and say what are you doing why are you giving this person Sunday morning at 8 o'clock? This will not happen again, or the contract uh, could possibly be gone. Well, that's, no, that's true, true, but can't we prevent them from doing stuff? Well, they do it once, yeah. and somebody comes to you and says, Laura, they gave me Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. I, 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 yeah. I, this is, that was my point, Jim, to some degree, was that we have the option to bring them, bring to ask them to come in front of us and well, speak to this. And, and Laura's absolutely right. Uh, for us, it's about the citizens of Hanson. So if somebody goes and has a problem with the access that they asked for, let's just say a Tuesday at 4 o'clock, and it could be any Tuesday at any 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. for two months straight they don't get it, but they're offered the Sunday morning at 8, well, then we got a problem. You're busy every Tuesday at 4 o'clock? Yeah. Is it because Bob Hayes got a show going? But you get my point, and that's that's why I would need the citizen to come up and say, listen, I tried to get an appointment Tuesday and Thursday, 4 o'clock. I have between 4 and 5 on those two days. They can't help me. What can we do? And then we call you guys in and we figure out what the problem is. <coughs> okay, I see what you're saying, but that's a remedy. I want to make sure that in the first instance that the contract is giving us a priority so that we don't ever have to have somebody come before us because the contract was written the right way and they've got to give them the priority. And I, I understand that, Laura, and I'm, I'm not, I'm only saying that if it happened, it may possibly be That's that. That's plan B. It, yeah. it may possibly be that Tuesday and Thursdays at 4 are not available, but Wednesdays and Fridays are. But you also got to get... trust that this organization is going to do the right thing, which they always have. They haven't given us any reason to think that they are not going to. My question to um, Laura was, again, changing exclusive to priority. I have no problem with that. If we, ha if we have, like, the right language, I mean, I don't know. Mike, are we allowed to change it on the fly and then of just, yeah. uh, like, tonight and then vote on it? Yeah. Is that very the much second so. sentence okay. is a much more complex sentence. If, if, if the, I don't know if the, we could change yeah, that. Yeah, that, that second one takes you down a winding path yeah, there. If we, yeah, if we can agree to strike that second sentence and change the first sentence to priority use of access users, I, I would agree to that. I mean, what was the intent of this point? Do you guys understand that the intent was probably just to make, when we say exclusive use of access users, I think they meant just for people in the towns of Whitman and Hanson. And again, that was written 10 some odd years ago mm -hmm. when I think that some of the, some of the concerns that, that Eric has brought up and that the groups in which he is involved have brought up uh, regarding uh, uh, continuity of funding perhaps did not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, there needs to be some consideration or some, well, some consideration of potential I really think you guys are overthinking this thing. Change the exclusive where he just said <clears> that priority. one line, scratch so that. So can you, can you read the sentence out, what the sure. new sentence would be for the D? Access Studio shall be for the pri priority use of access users. 
priority. Use of access users yep. and strike the second sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm fine with that. So remove exclusive and, and add priority. One, one thing too, so under on one of the sections under uh, section 10, it says as defined in appendix A. We have appendix A is your matrix. It is the matrix, right? Your okay. matrix, yeah. Just making sure, because I didn't see it in this contract per no. se. You know I mean? so my suggestion would be then, um, and I don't want to jump too far ahead of all of this, but my suggestion would be is if, if the Board of Selectmen has no other concerns about any other changes that have been identified in this contract, that the Board take two votes. The Board vote to accept the change in Section 8D to read, as uh, Eric or as the Chairman just mentioned, the Access Studio shall be for the priority use of Access users. To make a motion, uh, and accept a motion uh, to that effect. And then move on to uh, the board voting to accept all of the changes as indicated in the document before them. And again, I'm just assuming that there aren't any more issues. What section was the first change, Mike? Change uh, the, 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 Page. The yeah. section which we're speaking, about Page, which yeah. we're speaking, it's section E. We're going to keep section D, just section the first D. sentence, and remove exclusive and add priority. Yes. For the first sentence. Priority use. Right. Yes. That's what I mean. So we're going to remove exclusive and just put the word priority. So it reads, the access to you shall be for the priority use of access users, I would think, in the town of Whitman and Hanson. I'm right. sure that Something yeah. to that effect, right? Because priority, who, who can disagree with priority? Well, ac access users, I assume, is defined as Whitman for Whitman and Hanson for yes. Hanson in each of the agreements, right? Correct. The problem is that they usually have those definitions within the contract in the beginning, guys, right? So. I don't know where the defined terms are for, for this particular contract. It, usually they're in an appendix or a premium, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, they're somewhere. Because, so how many appendixes are there? Because under page 7, it says Appendix C. That was the original, and I think that had old language, and it was all taken out. So we should have crossed that out on page 7? Yes. It says a copy of Section 6.4 is attached here to as Appendix C. All peg annual support funding provided quarterly to the Town of Whitman, pursuant to Section 6.4 of its Comcast renewal license as Appendix C. So we should strike that, right? Copy the section. In the parentheses? Yeah. Because what, what Arlene is saying is right. That was part of the original agreement in the first sentence. Okay. <coughs> we already struck out B. I don't think there's any other changes. I'm looking from page 8 was the last one. There are no further nope, changes. There's page 10 under section E, the top. At the end of Whitman Hansen access first quarter, instead of beginning of each calendar year, it'll just that's yeah, what's been struck. The reason we did that was just because it'll be after our annual meeting. Um, we'll have more detail to give you at that point. So, so it's just a matter of moving the yardstick a quarter of the way down the year. Yeah. yeah. I, you're just giving yourself until the end of April. or, mm -hmm. or I, I don't know if you're fiscal. Uh, we're yeah, annual. Yeah. Annual okay. calendar. So it was redundant. What's that? Oh, it was redundant. No, he's, he's, no he's, they've not, given themselves. So that annual meeting is in yeah. March. Yeah. 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 So that way, at the end of March, we'll, or early April, we'll come in and. Uh, the way it was written, it was basically we'll, uh, saying like January, January 1st they had to give it to us, but since Beginning they meet the, yeah. in March. Now they've got till the end of that first quarter All right, I see. of every year. I was looking at this beginning of each calendar year within the first quarter, but I hear what you're saying. Okay. Is that it? That's it. I think I don't think I see any others. No. Let me make the motion the way that Mike said. So I would entertain a motion to accept uh, the. Agreement by the uh, Hanson, 
Second B. Yeah, two separate As amended motions. on this page 8, um, page 8, section 8, item D, the first sentence is to remain, and it should read the access studio shall be for the priority use of access users. With the second sentence struck. With the sentence, uh, sentence removed. And then under page 9, uh, well, all the other all the other amendments as 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 indicated crossed out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so, did you say you're entertaining a motion? I entertain so a motion. Moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. So I think we feel better with that sentence added in there. Okay. Thank you. And we do have a matrix, which is the appendix. You guys should have this in there as well, right? It is under item 7A, yes. if you'll notice. Yeah. Just as due diligence, yep. Mike has crossed off and checked off what we have received. Okay? Because these are the things that are, are owed to us. Thank you for this, guys, right? Inventory list was done. Meetings we've gotten. Insurance policies I know we got to. Fiscal year audits were all done. I remember seeing those. I got these in different, um, different times. They're all over it. Yep, in the 501c3 was corrected because you had uh, old Steve Royce, old name on it, originally. Yeah, so I, I hope I don't go anywhere either, but my name's not on it. It's okay. the corporation name. <laughs> All right, cool. Smart move. So moved. moved and seconded. Any any further questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Five zero. In the acceptance of this mic as amended. Yeah, well, what we'll do is make that slight change, uh, and we'll have something um, left on the table for you to sign as you come in. Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda is the town administrator's report. We got another motion, didn't we? Didn't, didn't you Should want we just separate uh, it? The, the motion, I, it, I would have preferred it separated. The motion uh, was made and carried that it was inclusive, and that's fine as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I phrased it so that it included. It's, okay. So sorry. Um, it's fine. The town administrator's report. Mr. Mike McHugh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, several different things. I uh, want to inform the board that uh, I had a meeting with a company called Blue Wave Solar um, a day or so ago. Uh, I'm looking into whether or not it makes <coughs> sense to make a uh, enter an agreement with them. They, they've, they're building a solar farm in Westport, which is uh, for the exclusive use of uh, a municipal net revenue, uh, net credits uh, against, um, against electrical bills. Uh, there's a possible 22% savings each year uh, to any town that uh, that joins this collaborative. Uh, we would see approximately a three to four thousand dollars savings on our electric bill, electrical bill every year. Uh, it is my plan to bring them in before the board of selectmen, uh, so the board of selectmen has uh, the opportunity to ask any questions it may have of them. It. Um, I currently don't see any downsides to it. We, we are engaged in a, a PPA right now, which will not be affected uh, if, we were to, um, if, we to, if we were to agree to join uh, this project. Uh, the savings would be on monies that uh, we actually still need to pay to National Grid in terms of transmission and, and other things. So um, the other outshoot of this conversation is uh, this particular group has volunteered uh, one of their site assessors to come out and take a look at Plymouth H County Hospital um, to give a, a really nuts to bolt assessment as to the viability of um, a solar use uh, in a, on a portion of that. Uh, we have taken a look here and there at uh, solar as a use out there, one of the many uses out there. Uh, but this would be a much more in-depth and professional assessment than we've had so far. So. Uh, it's potentially a win-win, but um, you know it's a, the conversation just started with uh, Blue Wave again uh, a few days or so ago. It is something if we uh, do want to avail ourselves of the savings, uh, we we do need to move kind of quick on it. So my plan is to have uh, to request that these individu individuals I can't talk tonight individuals come to a board meeting uh, either at the next meeting or or the following meeting. Mike, on that. Um are they looking at just PCH location, or are they looking at uh, maybe possibly down by uh, 
down by middle school. Well, they wouldn't be building anything for us. They're, they're, again, the, the, the project is being built in Westport. We would just buy in, um, or we would agree to certain terms which would avail us to uh, of the savings through some of the recs that the federal and the state government requires. Um, it just, as an adjunct conversation, I mentioned to them uh, our thought of using some of our land uh, as a solar project, uh, which would not necessarily have anything to do with this particular company. They were just basically telling me, well, hey, we've got somebody that we're willing to, you know, loan to you for a day or so to come out and do that nuts to bolts assessment. Doesn't mean we're going to have any interest in it. As a matter of fact, we very well, we probably don't have any interest in it. We're just going to do this as, as a courtesy uh, to the town of Hanson. So we basically get some free consulting out of the deal. Okay. And certainly I would imagine that if I were to ask them to take a look at another part of town, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, I think they would be willing to do that as well. So I'm, I'm just trying to throw out there that not only could we get some savings out of this, but they're, they're offering to help us in terms of taking a look at what we may be, able, may be able to do on our own going forward in terms of solar. Um, I got a, um, a letter of, of acknowledgement from Chief Nord in Duxbury that uh, the letter of attestation has been received uh, in regards to potentially regionalizing our dispatch. Um, just wanted to let you know, as I think I had told you via email after the last meeting, that that letter did go forward, and we have received confirmation that that letter has been um, has been received in Duxbury, and they're moving forward on um, you know their due diligence, and we'll get back to us. Uh, in fairly short order uh, is what I understand. So, Mike, can you just um, walk us through the timeline there? I know you're saying fairly short order, but so the state is going to, can you just talk about the players and who's going to the, play, the players would be um, the Duxbury uh, Rec, uh, Regional Old Colony, I forget what exactly the, it stood for, uh, as well as uh, the 911 personnel from the state. They would actually collaborate. I think the gentleman's name is Posner. Uh, they would speak to each other and work on some sort of a um, at least rough idea of what it would cost uh, the town of Hanson going forward, our uh, contribution to that operation, as well as what the state may be able to offer to us um, as an incentive to join. As I think the board is aware, um, the town of Rochester received an, an incentive uh, in terms of their police station. I'm not sure what Halifax got, but you know the state tries to commit some sort of monies in terms of improvement to emergency services infrastructure in each of the towns. So they would put together, um, you know, some sort of at least first blush at uh, what they think it would cost us and what the state the state could do, and then they would come before the board and the board at that point could make a decision as to whether it makes sense to hone that down and go forward but it would give them an i it would give us an idea and them an idea of and how that it, merger is that negotiable well the state can come in and say no too right mike right. well yeah that's, that's true too i mean at, at the end of the day which i i doubt but yes it's certainly possible the state could come this, in and say this, hey look at we've looked at the ins and outs the pros and the cons and you know what this really doesn't work I don't think that would happen, but it certainly could happen. Uh, as, as far as negotiations go, I think that um, I think there could be a certain degree. I don't want to guarantee it, but there could be some negotiation in terms of what the town of Hanson would pay to the town of Duxbury. Um, of course, the idea is, at the end of the day, it really wouldn't be the town of Duxbury. We've talked about the fact that they would look towards creating an authority. Uh, so it would really be us paying us in a sense, along with all the other towns. There could be a degree of negotiation in that. I would imagine that whatever the state offered would be what the state would offer. Okay. Well, I know before Duxbury sends a letter, they have to also run the call volume. Yeah, and you they're know, collecting they that information. They have to work with the police department and the fire yep. department. So there's still some things that they have to do before yep. they ship the letter off. So they can compile all the data and stuff to help the state make a decision on how much they're going to give yep. us. Yep. Sure. That is correct. Um, okay, and um, so w what's our ETA on that? You know, I'm not going to hold it. You well, I think I think they're looking to move rather quickly on it. So I would imagine the end of January, beginning of February. Before we'll hear an answer. Uh, before we'll get the first initial informa Absolutely, bits of information. Absolutely, this is a state we're dealing with. Yeah. It's it's going to be longer than that. 
No, I think a month is good. We'll see how bullish they are about us. <laughs> well, I think, it's going to be longer than yeah, that. It's well, going to take think, them a month just well, to compile I, the data I before think they, they send are, it to the state. I think they are fairly bullish on this. Mm -hmm. I think they really want to get a decision yeah. one way or the other from us. Um, because they obviously have their own considerations as well, their own operation, and uh, continuation of the operation of the other towns. Could you send Chief Nord an email and ask him, you know, what we should be expecting here for a time frame? Sure. That would be great. Yeah. Because my understanding, it's... Are you guys taking odds here, over under? Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely I'll taking the over. <laughs> if, I know, if I know Captain Ray, It's definitely not going to be a month. I can, and I don't I can know guarantee that. that. I guarantee he already has his stats. All he has to do is take ours and add to them and figure out from there. So, But, but it's a lot of data that's going to be compiled. And, Mike, I am wondering. Uh, you know, not, not to interrupt, but I, I'll actually read what the, the chief sent to me. Okay. Um, I have received the town's letter of attestation. I've reached out to the state 911 and your 911 for wireless calls. I would ask that after the first of the year that the police and the fire chief send me their year-end incident count. Mm -hmm. having, uh, having the calendar year 2017 incident count will give us the most recent numbers to draw a calculation upon. Once I receive, I will send you a letter of the breakdown of the cost to Hanson. I have CC'd uh, the two chiefs. So again, my interpretation of this is once that information is received, um, he's going to be able, able to rather quickly give us a breakdown and the cost of the, to the yeah, town of Hanson. Because he already has his numbers. All he has to do is take our, his... Right, uh, but don't we want to know what the state is going to contribute mm -hmm. and how much they're going to give us? Yeah, and I don't think that that's going to be... Right, that's I, don't, what I, was I, I really don't think that's predicated on off of the information that he has and he needs. Right, okay. I think that that's sort of a, a separate thing. This, the enticement will really be... Uh, and I've got some thoughts already. If we go in that direction, I've got some thoughts of, of my wish list. Uh, and I believe that uh, both chiefs have thoughts of what they would be looking for as well. And it's just a matter of, you know, the states will only give us, I don't know, uh, don't hold me to this figure, but half a million dollars would probably, yeah, that might be a little high, but, and then so with we that, with that half a million state, dollars. we can make a decision what we want to do prior yes. to what we, numbers in the state? Yes. Okay. Oh, most certainly. Okay. Yeah. If it came to that point. Yeah. But uh, again, the kicker may yeah. be uh, once, once that, um, once Duxbury gives us the figures of what it's going to cost every year, the Board of Selectmen may be on the fence, and the real incentive at that point for you to say yay or nay is, well, what is the state going to do to push us in that direction? So, yeah. and Mike, uh, okay. is there any way for us to find out um, when Duxbury anticipates the regionalization piece to be done i know they would take a year if, if if we agreed uh, if we agreed today no i'm not sorry i'm sorry to, to be clear not not us joining yeah, yeah. um if that even happens yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah. But, yeah. but the uh they were going to create an authority oh the authority yeah, yeah. To go to the other yeah, town the authority should be yeah, yeah. Was it, I'd have to ask what the timeline yeah, I thought is. He I don't said, think they gave us a timeline. I they? thought he said that it would take, Rochester, they already have signed up, but it would take another community getting on to put them over the edge then to, to the be authority. able to go to authority. But they didn't give us a time, a no, time frame. Right? No, but if they got another town to commit, whether it was Hanson or somebody else, Rochester's already going in. Yeah. At that point, I think they would start that process. I'll see clarification but on that. I don't okay. see that happening. Before, if, let's just say we agreed. I don't see that happening before we signed up and agreed within a year, if obviously if that's what we decided yeah. to do. Yeah, okay. But he, I think he would be forced to with another town to go that direction. Yeah. So, you wouldn't be forced, it's just it's, it's recommended, highly recommended. You never have to form an authority per se. It's, that would really be driven by the members, and I think that the town of Hanson on a number of different occasions in a different, number of different venues has impressed on them that you know we would want to see an authority created so everyone had the one single vote yep. as opposed to you know Duxbury basically running the show or um, you know if Plymouth joined they had three votes and we had one right. so what else you got Mike um, I had a very good conversation uh, between the town uh, the chairman of the uh, the planning board and a potential uh, town planner yeah. um, we are going to move forward as quickly as possible the 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 chairman of the uh, the planning board was very comfortable in moving forward with this person in terms of uh, a temporary position and I think I've always espoused 
that I, I want to put somebody in temporarily and figure out what the long-term plan should be. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there's some things coming before that board uh, very soon that require some professional guidance. So um, without getting into particulars, I don't want to let, uh, put a name out in case things uh, yeah. don't work oh, out no. in the end. But this particular person has experience both on the development side and uh, on the legal side both an attorney and a developer and has worked through a number of uh, subdivisions and uh, worked to 40R and uh, basically everything that we would really need uh, in terms of uh, professional advice or that board would need in terms of professional advice with what we're looking at coming down the road. So um, if I can put all the ducks in line, uh, I will look for the appropriate authority. I believe this is actually a planning board vote uh, for this particular individual, uh, I will put that before the next planning board meeting with my recommendation per the, the Town Administrators Act, and uh, we'll put somebody in again temporarily, and uh, we'll look at what makes sense for a long-term solution, whether that's a full-time person, whether we've got, uh, whether we anticipate enough work to warrant a full-time person, and whether the budget can handle it. So there's still some work to be done, but we'll have at least, like with the conservation situation, we will have somebody in place to get us through to the point where we can make a long-term uh, Hit the ground decision. running, Mike, on some of the projects that we have yeah. ongoing. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And she's aware, uh, you know, I've had the conversation of what's on the plate, and she's not daunted by that. And I'll also mention the fact that we still have full access to our former town planner who's working with OCPC and is obviously uh, committed to give us whatever support she can on all these things as well. Okay. Um, as the board may remember, um, I had scheduled a meeting with... Uh, uh, some members of uh, the State Economic Development Group, uh, Mass Development, and um, an individual who's in charge of the Downtown Development um, Initiative. Uh, we went around today, took a look at um, some of the sites on Main Street. Uh, well, basically, we looked at the entire town, but with particular emphasis on the stretch of road uh, on Main Street near the train station that we have, obviously, a lot of interest in redeveloping. And uh, we also took <coughs> a look at um, the hospital grounds. Uh, we took a look at McQuan um, to see uh, what sort of alternatives or what sort of options they may be able to help us with when we make a decision how we want to go forward on that particular property. Uh, they have asked for uh, a decent amount of information uh, for me to send to them. Um, I've asked them to send some information back to me. Uh, they have agreed that uh, they'd be more than happy to also meet with the Board of Selectmen, and I'd like to get them before the Board. Probably, I'd probably push that out to uh, probably February or so once, you know, I have a couple more conversations with them, and I get them the information they need. Uh, I was very encouraged by this particular meeting, and they saw, as I think we all see, uh, there's a lot of potential here in the town. Uh, we're obviously not going to bring Biogen in, uh, but uh, we really have some opportunities of doing some significant, some very impressive things, especially down around the train station. And uh, it's, it's really, oh, I don't want to say an easy plug and play, but I mean, it's just, it just lends itself so easily to that sort of what they call a transit oriented development. And it's, it's, it's something that I noticed as soon as I got to town and really started looking at things. And they picked up on it as well right away. So I will keep the board updated as I try to move that forward. Well, that's good news, Mike. And we really appreciate you making that contact and working that and keeping it going. Well, I actually do enjoy that. I mean, I, I enjoy the aspects of economic development. It's really what I broke into this line of work doing for another town. And uh, I've always, whether I was on uh, a board of selectmen or whether I was a town administrator, that's always been a passion of mine uh, for a number of different reasons. Um, Kids are disappointed we don't have a Taco Bell, though, but that's okay. What's that? Kids are disappointed we don't have a Taco Bell. The KFC. rumor is that there's going to be a Taco Bell. Well, it's funny because they, 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 they really want these, Taco Bell. these individuals were talking about Subway. They said, you don't have a Subway in town. Yeah, there you go. We I said, well, we've got a McDonald's yeah. and a CVS. We've got, yeah. Um, That's good, Mike. I spoke, um, uh, I believe it was, was it Friday? It was Thursday last. I sat with uh, two members of the Recreation Commission uh, who were so delegated by the overall commission, and we reviewed the responses that we got uh, in regards to the RFQ that we put out for the Recreation Director. We have identified five individuals with whom we wish to speak. 
uh, we will start setting those up um, hopefully we'll start setting those up by the end of uh, this week but of course with the holiday season things mm -hmm. can get bogged down and be difficult I also and I think I may have mentioned this before we have one vendor who we're speaking to as well uh, that would uh, provide that sort of a service or is going to pitch at us how they would provide that sort of a service and Mike these folks have got a strong like event planning background yeah okay yeah we actually we did get approximately 25 to 26 people that expressed interest in it and uh, <laughs> as as you may all uh, have experienced in the past when you put an advertisement out especially when you use something like indeed or or monster.com you, you get people from all sorts of backgrounds yeah. and that have absolutely no qualifications. I'm sorry to say it, but that we had to weed through an awful lot of them and just completely discount them uh, because they, they came with absolutely nothing. However, there were, again, there were five that we felt good about, some bit better than others. However, uh, we wanted to have a decent pool to, to, to look at. Uh, and I believe we agreed upon the process that we would then have two or three that we would recommend to the full commission. Uh, and let the commission make the decision on how they want to move forward. And in all honesty, if the commission is not comfortable with any of the people we bring before them, you know, they, they don't have to accept one. We can go out and look again. And again, we do also do have a, a proposal that we anticipate coming from uh, from a vendor to uh, to oversee uh, the, the uh, recreation director position. So, and that that may pr prove fruitful as well. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sure. um, I may be speaking out of line on this mic, hmm. um, but, and you know as well as I do, um, according to the Town Administrators Act, you have um, the power to suggest mm -hmm. hiring and firing. Mm -hmm. um, to suggest. To suggest. Yep. My, my problem is, is that we sat here, I think it was two or three weeks ago, uh, and we've gone through this process before mm -hmm. with you, a member of this board, um, but, you know, back before Laura and I get on, yeah, mm -hmm. and a member of the Rec Commission. Mm -hmm. with, you're doing it again with the Rec Commission mm -hmm. without one of us, mm -hmm. and it's the same Rec Commission that when their last um, um, uh, on September 19th, when Rachel Gross resigned, mm -hmm. they have yet to put in the paperwork to Mary to get on the announcements that they need a member yet we're going to let two of that commission there's been a recreation member resigned on september 19th yeah and the rec commission themselves have not put in the paperwork or at least called mary <coughs> to get on the announcements yet two of those members are going to pick out the new recreation director well not pick out but make the suggestion make the to suggestion the, to, the, to the, the other board. five yeah or the other four well, since there's only six yeah, yeah. okay so is the question, Jim, that you're asking is why isn't why have why are put, they on it? Why, why haven't they put Mike, that position on? Right. Yeah. Are you saying why is Mike on it? No. Why oh. isn't Mike on it alone? Oh. Because you can't do that. I, I thought it was. Isn't it written in the? It's well, recreation you, commission. You would make your recommendation out of the people. Well, that, at the end of the day, it would be my recommendation that would come before to the, the recreation, recreation commission right. per to the six. Per, but uh, doesn't the bylaw say it's the recreation commission? Well, it's, 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 it's the rec. It's recreation commission, as I just mentioned. It, it's the planning board's I, uh, you know, decision. I may uh, have on not that gotten my thing. point across the way I wanted it to. The last recreation director that was hired yeah. failed. Yeah. Yet it was a, a member of this board. A recreation member in Mike, and it failed doing it that way. I think yeah. it was because it was a member of this board, is because we didn't have a commission intact at that exactly. time. Exactly. I mean, so it now we have a commission intact. Well, Jim, it depends. No, on, hold on. It depends on your definition of fail. That person resigned, right? Okay. So that's yeah. not really a failure. Well, I, I not way, per se. I'll, however you want to do it, it didn't work it, if we it, use that for a word. It, right. Within the six work. month period, which is what the process is set right. up to yeah. do. So, my question is the Recreation Commission. Uh, a member of that committee resigned on September 19th and they couldn't call Mary or put in the proper paperwork to get on the announcements since then but they're going to be a part of the process to hire a new so you want to penalize director. them because they haven't emailed Mary to say there's an open position absolutely you because can't, something you as can't simple as this I, can't. I'm not, I'm I, 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 I hear what you're saying I'm, I 
to, I hate to use a word we used earlier. I see that as almost a non sequitur. Yeah. Uh, but I, I see what you're saying. And I and Mike, is there a reason why they're not listed? Not, not, not that I don't I can know speak what the formal to. process no. is. I, I've, Jim's right. They should I, probably I, send an email. I, but I, just yeah, because they haven't done it yet. Mike, why don't we just take that back, Mike, and you can take it to the. Can you call the rec check yeah, with Amory and then but, have, have a reply? But on. as far sure. as the protocol, so we all are in agreement that the reason that we had a member of the board of selectmen is because the recreation in the prior iteration is because the um, recreation, recreation commission wasn't up on its feet. Right, it was, it was going through a whole that did situation, the mm -hmm. and uh, and I would always hope. Even though ultimately, could Mike run roughshod and just be the one to appoint? I would always hope that to the extent that somebody's going to be working with a group of people, that they'd be involved in trying to figure out whether that's a good fit. Not that they'll totally be the one, you know, Mike, Mike is going to, you know, oversee it. Mike's going to be the one being the, you know, recommending to them. Um, but I would... I mean, if I were on the Recreation Commission, I'd want to have people from my group be part of the vetting process so that I know that, you know, we're getting represented and what we're looking for. And to your point, we don't have a rehashing of what happened the first time. Um, I, 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 mean, I honestly think a lot of that, uh, <coughs> not, not to get, you know, might have been that all-encompassing job description that we had that was just a lot for one person to try to do. Um, but that's a whole different story for a different day. I think day. we're getting off point. This is not part of the actual town administrator's report. But, Jim, your point is taken. Yeah. We'll find out why the Recreation Commission hasn't advanced that position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Mike, what else you got? Well, let me just write that down. I just want to stay on topic, guys. I, I have heard Jim heard mention, mention that before. Uh, yeah. I wanted to let the Board of Selectmen know, you know, I, I have said it on a number of occasions over the course of, I think, almost the entire year that um, I, uh, as, long as, uh, as well as um, along with other members of staff, have been looking at the viability of staying, uh, keeping our health insurance with the Mayflower Group. Mm -hmm. um, there was a concern about the increase last year and the viability of the group going forward, given some of the, the reports we were getting in terms of um, the uh, reserves that they were drawing down and the experience rates. Um, basically, you know, um, some cases that cost an awful lot of money um, that were really bringing the, the overall group down. Uh, I looked at uh, three different alternatives uh, over the course of the last several months. Uh, and, and in all honesty, in speaking with Mayflower um, up to a couple of weeks or so ago, uh, we are confident, we're comfortable staying with Mayflower for the coming year. So I have informed the other people with whom we were speaking, thank you very much. We may have an interest in speaking with you in the future. However, uh, we feel comfortable at least going with Mayflower for an additional year. And uh, we may have, and I've seen this happen, especially with uh, communities that have gone over to the GIC, uh, with going with a, an alternative, we very well could have seen a one-time savings, a significant one-time savings. However, uh, the long-term savings I've seen not be there in some of these instances. Plus, um, one of my concerns is the long-term viability of a group that only contains three or four communities. One way or the other, I don't feel Mayflower is going anywhere anytime soon. And one of the things that I've always said, uh, maybe not at one of these meetings, but certainly privately and in, in other meetings, is there are two things that I that I am very risk avoidant of, and that is anything that would uh, jeopardize somebody's salary, and anything that would jeopardize somebody's insurance. Uh, those, I think, are the two, and I think we can all agree to those are two of the most basic things that all of us are employed or, or seek employment <coughs> to have. So I am very, very risk avoidant. Um, if if I had certain other assurances or, or some of these groups, uh, some of these organizations that I had approached had a longer track record, maybe we'd be having a different conversation, and maybe we will have a different conversation in the next year or so. But right now, we're going to stay with Mayflower. So. Any um, idea on what their increase may be? No. Because I know last they, they year it was really, even, really outrageous. They won't even whisper it. Okay. Um, and I understand why, because they don't want to send out uh, any false information, whether it's positive or negative, right. until they receive 
the uh, <coughs> end of year experience rates, uh, which they won't get probably for another month or so after the beginning of the year. And then, they, of course, they've got to put it through all of their calculations and machinations and whatnot. They're, they're very conservative in terms of throwing a number out may not be a conservative number, but they're conservative in terms of the process. So yeah. I, in, all, in, in all honesty, I've asked a couple of times, can you at least give me a hint? And, and they won't. And I, and I can respect why they won't. Uh, the uh, FY19, and it's, <laughs> it's funny to say we're, we're approaching fiscal year 2019 very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, I expect uh, at least the preponderance of uh, all the budget submittals to be in by the end of this week. And we will start on that process in terms of formulating the budget for the coming fiscal year, which, of course, the Board of Selectmen will be uh, very involved with. So <coughs> I just wanted to let you know what the timeline was. Um, uh, the rest of this um, is not all that important. I can bring this before the Board at the next uh, the next meeting. Uh, How about a quick update on the school committee meeting? Today? Right, from today. Uh, well, uh, it's not on the agenda. However, I believe that it's permissible uh, for me to at least mention uh, what occurred. And it really all is... Um, from your, as your TA report. Yeah, right? I, I think it's all kind of last minute. I, I shouldn't say last minute, but some things came up over the course of the last week or so that... Uh, the school committee has taken a very, a very a much closer look at, not that they were, weren't looking at things closely before, but as they've gone through the, uh, the procedure of uh, looking at closing McQuan down and uh, facilitating those students in, in different places in the other, built, other uh, facilities that we have, um, they've come to the realization that some of this is going to cost a bit more, a considerable amount more than uh, they had orig originally anticipated. Um, the conversation, the very brief conversation we had with the, the school committee before we had to adjourn back to this meeting was uh, the very real possibility, once we get some better, uh, harder, and faster numbers uh, that they're working on diligently, that we very well may want to look at having a special town meeting to uh, approve the funds uh, to move forward on this. I think that uh, there's a lot of downsides in waiting for uh, an annual town meeting to approve these funds. Uh, because it would push the transition out of McQuan out probably another full year. Uh, not only would we not realize, begin to realize some of the savings, and the savings won't necessarily at this point outpace the expenditures going forward, but we would lose that one year of trying to get to the point where the savings outpace the expenditures. In addition to that, um, if we were to keep the school open uh, another year, uh, we, I'm sure, would be looking at putting in an awful lot of money, good money after bad, in all honesty at this point, to make sure that the students that would be, that still be going to that school would be safe. Um, as the board is probably aware, we have put some money into um, the school to get through this particular semester that we would have preferred not to have done, but, you know, we've got to make sure that the kids are safe, got to make sure that there's heat in the building, all those sorts of things. At the end of the day, a building, and we, there's no determination, obviously we're going through that procedure as well, there's no determination on what we are going to do with that building once we do acquire it. But obviously one of the, one of the options is to tear the building down. I'm not saying that's the option, but would we want to be putting money into a facility for another year and then turn around and make the decision that we're tearing it down? So. It, it really makes an awful lot of sense, at least off the top of my head, and as I discussed at the school committee meeting, I, I've got to do an awful lot of thinking and talk to an awful lot of different people about the timing of this, the legalities. There's a lot of questions, uh, but off the top of my head, it probably makes sense for us to think about putting uh, sooner than later a special town meeting together, um, allocating those funds either through a borrowing or through a uh, debt exclusion or through, uh, or through whatever mechanism. I, I would think at this point, the, the amount that we've been talking about, it probably makes sense to do a two or three year borrowing, um, but make a decision sooner than later and How long does it take forward. to post for a special town meeting? Uh, 45 days. 45 days. Yes. So if that's the way we're going to go, we need to do that well, sooner than later. Yes, yes. And uh, I think... You're going to check that with Beth, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, like I said... Um, some of this information is new not only to myself and, and this board, but also to, to Bob's board and, uh, and to the administration there. And um, so we still have to do some 
we have to have some further discussions about the right way to proceed, but we're going to do all of that cooperatively uh, and in the best interest of the taxpayers and the students of this town. So the, I wouldn't be, you know, the next, you, the next two or three weeks we're going to be off, obviously, because of the holidays, but if you found something and you thought that that was the way to go, I'd be more than happy to meet. come in and meet. Yeah. And if we had a quick meeting just to vote on that so they can start that process, and then that gives the school committee the 45 days to figure out how much it's going to be. Yeah. Because I think that if we wait, let's call it, I'm just going to make up a number. Let's say it's uh, $100,000 to do that transition. We wait another year, it's going to be 300000 Exactly. Exactly. You know? exactly. So I think that's something... It's obviously money we would prefer not to have to allocate and spend, but it, it, it's smart to put. It's smart. To, it's smart to spend the money now um, when we look at the potential long term, not only costs but uh, uh, liabilities that we could have. So, sure. but again, it, it, this is all new information to mm -hmm. a number of different people, and we've got to work through it. And in all honesty, it's going to be the priority, at least uh, of, of my office, for the next several days to figure out the right way to go forward with this and get it done, sure. but done the right way. I don't know how much it's going to cost if we have to extend it another year. Mm. Okay. They, they quoted it at the meeting today. We ought to have, think we we ought to have a meeting sooner it's or later. Yeah. John, yeah. But Bob, is, I think Just they said 554, was it, or 545? In the last three years, the town spent $554,781 to keep the quantum. Right. That's not counting the day to day. You know, the labor. Everyday losses and could be more than that. Well, I, I mean, as Ruth mentioned tonight, electric and HV and the heat up there are, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what's going to happen. So we have a pretty much nailed down figure of what this cost and what the portion would be to the town of Hanson. We had left before the meeting. What was the time? $555,095.13. Okay. What would be the time frame if it needed to extend the, the, the time frame? Jim, six to eight months we're talking about? Yeah, we, we'd like to be ready for the next school year, but the critical parts are working in February vacation and working in April vacation because a lot of what needs to be done is noisy work, right? and it can't be done when the students are in the school. Yeah. So I know two weeks sounds crazy, but it's two more weeks. Right, right but obviously you guys don't shouldn't shouldn't and don't want to do the work until we've had the town chime in and vote and yeah you fund can't it. you can't yeah. do the work until the jobs fund you know until we have the funding yeah. i mean which is town meeting right yeah which would be a town meeting yeah you can't wait till uh may no 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 well, if no. you wait till may you're losing a tremendous amount of time yeah. we're going to do this so we can have it in february yes yeah yep exactly we, we in fact one of our thoughts was we wanted to start some of it, and some of it we are going to be starting because whether we do it or not, we're moving Indian Head grade, grade five to the middle school. Right. That's happening. Yep. We're also going to move McQuan and Indian Head SPED program to the ball school. That's happening. Okay, when you move the Indian Head fifth grade to the middle school, it's going to free up some classrooms in Indian Head so some of this project can get started. Great. Right. What we're trying to do, Jim, and, and the rest of the board, and I kind of chimed and jumped in and right. in the town administrator's meeting, I yeah. mean, uh, report. And what we're trying to do is do a lot of it in-house so we save a tremendous amount of money. Right. And, right. you know, because whatever saves the district saves the town. Sure. Right. Ultimately, it's the same part. So consequently, <coughs> if we can do this work during the vacations with some interior crew, you know, you're gonna you're gonna obviously see a save. When's the next meeting, Mike? I mean, Paul. Please. I can. We're at the point, just like Mike, Mike said. Is on the fly. Fly. Mike first. It's, we'll make another meeting. It's gonna be on the fly because yeah. we're on the clock. Yeah. And I think I When's think February it's, vacation. February vacation, I believe, is the third week of February. Uh, so I think it makes sense. Forty-five days brings you into the first of February. I think it makes sense, Mr. Chairman, not to go too far afield on this topic right now. Yeah, um, I, agree. I think that, uh, and as we discussed very briefly at the at the school committee meeting, and of course they've they're more than happy to to participate. I think that when we make the decision on setting a, uh, a special um, town meeting, well, town meeting, I was going to say special selectmen's <laughs> meeting to set a special town meeting, that we invite Bob and perhaps Ruth and Christine and mm -hmm. and have you know a fully advertised or fully posted 
meeting and discussion on this because I would imagine that, uh, and, and there was a fairly good attendance at your meeting yes, uh, earlier was. today, I would imagine that there are members of the Hanson community that would like to be present for, for the conversation. So that's why I, I just don't want to go too, too deep into it, but I wanted at least, you know, put it out there that this is something that we need to jump on and jump on quick. So, yeah. and we will again move extremely diligently on it. And I, I want to say in closing um, that I appreciate, and I'm sure I will continue to appreciate the, um, the level of cooperation that I get out of uh, Bob's people, uh, out of the district, out of, out of your staff. And I think we, we have a, a very good working relationship Thank and it makes I know that it makes your life easier and it makes my life easier and it makes this board's this board's work a lot easier. That's why I came, I was like, maybe if I go one meeting after the next, yeah. Yeah, it's just it is what it is, but we've got to get it done. Right. Yeah. So Thank you for that. So Thank you. Uh, more on that will be coming. So committee yes. reports. Two hundredth anniversary Thanks committee. Well. Pass. Nothing to report. One pond committee. I haven't received any information since the last meeting. Thank you, Tony. Uh, final Plymouth County Hospital Reuse Committee. We had a meeting. Well, I thought it was going to be posted sometime in January, but I'll have to do it in the next meeting. Okay. How did the walkthrough go? Did you have a uh, people show? We had a very good showing of three okay. people. Beautiful. Did you? Oh, okay. Well, Listen, what's uh, Mike? How are we doing on the I'm antenna sorry. up there? Uh, I'm sorry, Sandy. The antenna at the yeah. Plymouth County is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. Uh, we're we working on Kenny and his company come in, maybe. Yeah, what do we think? All right, that's cool. <laughs> as long as I keep saying it, we won't forget it, right? Yes, well, uh, as I think I mentioned at one point, the, uh, the person that's doing the septic work uh, is more than happy to participate with us in terms of uh, someone who has the proper equipment uh, to take it down. So that. Yeah, it, will be, be it will be coming down, but it, again, it's uh, they were very concerned when they took a look at it uh, in terms of safety. It'll be after the holidays, Jim. Yeah. All right, <laughs> guarantee after the holidays it's yeah. coming down. Maybe we'll right. be having Christmas tree. <laughs> right. Uh, McQuan School Reuse Committee. Uh, nothing yeah. to report. We'll be meeting in January, but this little chunk of documents right here is what we'll be reviewing at our next meeting, meeting. in January. So you can be jealous of that. It would be good if you sold the the, the area and they paid for the um, move, huh? Yep. Yeah, that's just an idea. Yep, we'll work on that. Hanson School Repair Committee, Mr. Hickey. I'll pass. Nothing to say. Okay. Highway Building Committee, Mr. Um, I'm waiting for an update from the <coughs> engineer over there to see where we are with the plantings and stuff. So once I get that, he's pretty good. He should get back to me. I actually called him Monday, let's say Tuesday. Called him yesterday. Once he gets back to me, then I'm going to post a meeting for January after the holidays so we can uh, get back on it too. So I should have something to report. Next year. Next meeting, hopefully. Yeah. Next meeting, I'm sorry. That's cool. Next year. Um, next year. So according to this, by the way, the next selection meeting would be January 9th. Yep. Okay. Um, moving on, is there any, are there any other the comments? Post it. Post it. Post it. Already this posted, moment. already yeah. contemplated. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And it would be every two weeks after that, too. So. But likely we'll be meeting before that. Yeah. Yeah. Probably because the case, yes. If there is nothing further to report, I would um, ask to make a motion to executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an opening meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the so and the chair so declares, administrative personnel. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Yes. 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 Roll call vote is yes. We're now in executive session, and when we adjourn. We will adjourn to uh, regular meeting and write out of regular meeting and end the meeting altogether. So we may not, this will be our only opportunity to say Merry Christmas. Yep. Merry Christmas to all residents and a Happy New Year. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas, guys. Thank you all very much. We're now in executive session.